Here are four quick tips on how to spot a sh** paper. Number one, a very small sample size. This is important because the more you test something, the more likely you are to be close to the real effect. So if you flip a coin once or twice or three, three times, you might get tails every time. But if you do it a like thousand times or two thousand times, you're very likely to be close to 50% and to be as close as possible to the real effect. With a small study, you can get a spurious result, which is nothing like the real effect that you would get in the real world. Number two, when there's no control group. This one is crucial because uh, we know a lot of conditions get better on their own. So for instance, for a low back pain within two to three weeks, about 50% of people's pain will be pretty much gone. So I could have told them to watch Naruto instead of doing a bunch of physio exercises or getting some chiropractic adjustments. And I would then say, hey, Naruto cured low back pain. That sounds really stupid, right? But a lot of papers do that. They compare it to nothing and they say they got better. There's also a lot of placebo effects, which we can't rule out if we don't use a control group. Number three is using mechanistic data to make claims about effectiveness. Um, so a cl classic example is using like a petri dish study or a rat study, uh, which is very common in cancer to say like, hey, let's say like, oh, this molecule kills cancer in a petri dish. Well, it doesn't mean it kills it in humans because humans have a lot of like protective mechanisms and feedback mechanisms that might make it so that it doesn't happen. Yeah, and in pain science, we see that a lot by showing like, hey, this neuron is less sensitive after this intervention, but it doesn't mean patients have less pain. Another classic example in rehab is using um, things like posture and biomechanics and showing, hey, this intervention changed these things, therefore the patient got better. Whereas it's not necessarily the case, and you know that's probably why we see a lot of research showing a poor correlation between posture and pain and biomechanics and pain. Number four is subscribe and follow me so um, I can do another one because uh, I have to go get the mail, but I might do a lot of more of those if this does well.